Darryl Strawberry at right field. Kevin McReynolds batting fifth and left. Gary Carter doing the catching. Howard Johnson at third base batting seventh. Kevin Elster the shortstop. And in the ninth spot, pitcher Ron Darling. The umpires, Lee Wire, will be behind the plate. Ed Montague at first base. John McSherry at second. And Fred Brocklander will be at third base. And to bring you what's going on around the rest of the American and National League, and the play-by-play -play in the top of the inning, a man without a peer, Skip Carey. Thanks, Billy. Cincinnati leads Montreal, 1-0. At the end of three, Pasquale Perez against Ron Robinson, Cal Daniels. Cal Daniels is at his fifth homer. Philadelphia got three in the first, and they lead Houston 3-0 after an inning and a half. Nolan Ryan against Kevin Gross, the other action on the West Coast. Texas and Baltimore scoreless after an inning. Kansas City 2-0 over Boston. That's after two and a half. Cleveland 1-0 over California after three. Oakland and Detroit scoreless after two. Later on, the Yankees are in Chicago. Minnesota will be at Milwaukee, and Toronto will play at Seattle. Bobby Cox, the general manager of the Braves, is on his way to New York right now, we understand. The trade rumors concerning Zane Smith, who's pitching this game, continue to be heard. And now the Toronto Blue Jays have announced that their star left-hander, Jimmy Key, will undergo arthroscopic surgery on Wednesday to repair damage in his left elbow. Key was examined by Dr. Frank Job, who is one of, well, I guess, the leading expert on pitchers arm problems in all of baseball so that may make Toronto sweeten the pot a little bit if Zane has a good outing tonight and if Toronto is interested George Steinbrenner and the Yankees figure to be interested too you know Billy before the Mets take the field or as they take the field the one other thing about the Pete Rose 30 day suspension that we didn't get into at the open we understand that Marty Brenneman and Joe Knoxall the Reds announcers were also called in by the president of the National League and I guess he criticized them for exciting the crowd. Yeah, our remarks that they made and that brings up a very interesting to me situation. Maybe the question needs to be asked are announcers shills for baseball or are we supposed to report honestly? It's sort of a I don't know. I think we're I don't know what they said, and if some of the, they're both good friends of mine, if some of the things they said were in, were quoted as saying were said, I don't think I would have said exactly that, but I don't think that the president of the National League has a right to tell a newspaper man what to write or an announcer what to broadcast. What do you well, think? Just, just to be pragmatic, I don't think that there are that many people at the stadium with either radios and or TVs. I don't know what they were on at the time radio that could hear that that would have been excited enough to throw or one guy threw a radio maybe he didn't like the broadcast <laughs> but that's interesting you bring that up because technically you and I even though it's the same entity we all work for Ted Turner Turner Broadcasting you and I work for TBS where Ernie Johnson and Pete Van Weeren work for the Braves so the Braves would be under the jurisdiction of Bart Giamonti where you and I would not well that's that's not right that shouldn't that shouldn't be that way I ask the question again I think we're supposed to be reporters or not trying to make us sound important but I don't I don't think I work for a part of Giamonti I think I work for the fans and you do and Ernie does and Pete does and Marty Brenneman and Joe Nutsall do and I know on your time off tomorrow you're going to go by 350 Park Avenue and express yourself to Bart nope. Giamonti no nope. you've got better things to do Yep. <laughs> okay. Deion James leads it off. In a way, I'm glad that happened because I think it might bring that out into the open. 0-1 oh, the count. I think the perception of some baseball people is that we're supposed to do a house job for the respective teams. I don't think that's right. I know Mr. Turner doesn't feel that way. It's let us call him as we see him for a lot of years now. 0 oh, 2 to Deion James. Ron Darling, as we get back to baseball and away from philosophy, has never lost to Atlanta. <laughs> Deion out of Sacramento, California. Lines one on an 0 2 pitch into right field. He didn't hit it that hard, but it's a good spot. 
And that always upsets a pitcher when he allows a hitter to wriggle off an 0-2 hook. So a good start for Atlanta, and Andres Thomas is the batter, hitting 221. You're talking Some homer, six RBI. Excuse me, Skipper, you're talking about the 0-2 count. In some kangaroo courts, the particular court jurisdiction within the club, they will find pitchers for giving up 0-2 hits. A lot of clubs like for you to waste a pitch or try to nibble a little bit, and some other clubs have the philosophy that you can go right after them. Do we still have one of those? I don't believe so. They had a, a small court when I was playing in 86. Well, we used to have a massive when Rick Camp was around. He got fined for sneezing. Among other things. <laughs> yeah, that was a relatively minor offense. Runner going. I would guess that somebody missed a sign. The runner's breaking from first, and Thomas was trying to beat on a bunt. Well, it'll be interesting as manager Chuck Tanner has inserted Thomas in the second spot because Andres is not a type of player that I think that will take a lot of pitches. And he's going to swing, and you've got he's going to be hitting behind the Deion Jameses and especially the Albert Halls, the, the better base stealers in the league. And it'll be interesting to see just how much he will take hitting in the second spot. Into the dirt, and Gary Carter may have been crossed up. He goes to the mound to talk it over with Darlin. Chuck Tanner down at the far end of the dugout appeared to be talking to third base umpire Fred Brocklander. Now he makes his way back to his normal perch. I don't know if he was trying to get a balk called or what. Thomas waits. James leads. Pitch out. Nothing happening. Two balls. One strength. Peter Smith tomorrow against David Cohn of the Mets. It will not be televised. We'll have an NBA playoff doubleheader for you. Pete Van Weeren will join Rick Barry in Cleveland where the Bulls will play. And Bob Neal and Steve Jones will be in Seattle for Denver and the Super Sox. Lined into right center field. Strawberries there, though. Thomas hit it hard, but out. One away, and Dale Murphy the banner. Then on Wednesday night, Rick will join me here in New York for the Knicks and Celtics in game three. Let me ask you, Skip, how difficult is it for you to do baseball one day and basketball the next? Not difficult. The only thing difficult is the travel. Games are. I don't, I don't understand why all NBA games and Major League Baseball games aren't all played in Atlanta. It just make my life much easier. Somehow that's not going to work out. One ball, no strengths. Is that because all the flights seem to go through Atlanta? No, a, I like to be home. One ball, no strengths. Although we did an appropriate amount of damage last night in New York, so. I'll have to exclude myself yes, from that we. For a change. You're the fortunate one. One ball, no strengths. Two and zero oh the count. Murph hitting 236, three homers, seven RBI. Right through there, the old automatic two and one. Murph has scored nine runs. He has three doubles, three homers, seven RBI. By the way, Keith Hernandez has been voted National League Player of the Week. Unfortunately, we had a lot to do with that. He roughed us up in Atlanta. Seven RBIs in one game. If you joined us late or weren't with us over an hour ago when we did the open, Pete Rose has been suspended for 30 days for bumping umpire Dave Pallone. After Dave Pallone apparently inadvertently 
popped him in the face with his index finger. Two balls, two strikes. Well, Pete will be at Churchill Downs Saturday, I guess. The 2 2. Instead to first base. I don't know if he gets, if that's 30 days without pay. We were asking Chuck Tanner before the game. He didn't know either. I don't know if he's allowed to go to the ballpark and just has to isn't go Marge, into the press box. Isn't Marge shot on an austerity program? Yeah. There goes James. Fly ball right field. Pretty well hit. But strawberries there. Dion retreats two up. Well, if she is, then she saves about $80,000. She saves a bunch if, in fact, he is not paid. I don't know if he is going to appeal it or the Reds are going to appeal it. A lot of things still up in the air. Well, you figure that he was going to serve some type of suspension. Well, he I knew think, that. Yeah. I, I just think that, as you said in the open, and a lot of people, as we've talked about it today and probably will be talked about for the next month, felt that a month was a little shocking to them. Especially if the umpire initiated the contact, even if it was an accident. Boy, somebody gets in your face. It's almost reflective to hit that. Especially if they've got bad breath. Yeah. Now, I don't know that about... That was belly sample, Dave Pallone. <laughs> I got enough No, no, problems. no, no, no. That was just in general. Sorry, Dave. That was a general statement. Oh, and one the count to Griffey. He's at 129 with five RBI. Swung late, headed foul. I was never tall enough to argue with any of the umpires. You ever... How many times did you get thrown out? Once. By. I think it was Daryl Cousins. It was my rookie year, the first week. And he missed a couple of pitches, and I said so. I addressed everything in the third person, but and really didn't get thrown out for that. I slammed my bat going back to the dugout. The 0 2 hit foul with James Reddick. What did you say? Bleep, 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 bleep. That bleep bleep. That'll normally do it. James at first, two out. This is Dion's the ballpark where Dion made his famous pigeon shot last year. Into the dirt. Carter blocks it nicely. A ball and two strikes. Lee Wire. Calling the balls and strikes. Players tell us he is, if not the best, certainly one of the best in the business. I guess what it boils down to, it's 15 days per push. You push an umpire. Think he'd have only gotten 15 if it was only one push? I don't know. That's just shocking. I think he pushed him the second time because he really didn't get a good push the first time. He's lucky. I mean, Pete is lucky if, in fact, Pallone hit him that he didn't flip completely and punch his lights up. And again, it would be just a reflex if that's the case. The sad part is Pallone, according to what we could see and all the people we've talked to from the Mets, Pallone went, made the correct call. He just made it four seconds too late. I still don't know if it was quite four seconds. It was late, but I don't think it was that late. The 2 2 with a runner going, struck him out, the bottom dropped out, and the inning is over. The late off single comes to nothing. One hit, no runs, no errors, one left. We move to the bottom of the first. Atlanta is scoreless. The Mets are coming to bat. This is the Goodies Extra Strength formula that you made the best-selling headache powder in the Southeast. The same reliable brand that's been relieving the pain and discomfort of headaches, arthritis, muscular aches and colds for more than 50 years. And the very same Extra Strength formula that Goodies has now made into a tablet. Goodies Extra Strength tablets and powders. Now, isn't that a relief? Who do you call to defeat the heat? Call me Reem. Reem is marching through the neighborhoods of America. Call me Reem. To defeat the heat on the home front. 
Your Rheem dealer has the heat pump you need to keep cool in the summer, warm in the winter, and save money year-round. Call him fast. Call him reliable. But call him. Call me Rheem. Your Rheem dealer is in the yellow pages. Call him to defeat the heat. When a hot game follows dinner, even Pat Riley can lose his cool. Not good. That's when he reaches for control. Rolaids. Rolaids and acid consumes all the acid required to give millions 100% relief from heartburn and acid indigestion. That way, Pat's free to let his emotions really show. Not bad. Relief. You know how to spell it. As is normally the case when we go to the bottom of the first, we take a look at the defense. And Zane Smith will face Mookie Wilson, Tim Tuffle, and Keith Hernandez. But that particular defense leads the National League in fielding with a 989. Yes, it is. I didn't know that. So maybe there is a pertinent reason for why they put that up at the oh, end of the inning. Absolutely is. Because it lets people know who's playing where. Is hitting 286 with two homers and 10 RBIs. Curveball is in there for a strike, 0 and 1. As the day's play begins, the Mets are a half game behind the Pirates. And the Braves are nine games behind division leading Houston. Better than Baltimore by 15 and a half out on May 2nd. Wow. It's a tough road to climb. Ours is not exactly sweetness and light, but by comparison. Got him. Fastball over the inside corner. Wilson argues about it, but he is pumped out of there. One down. Lee Wire has the reputation of having a rather wide strike zone. Well, the 0-2, you see Virgil slide inside. And it freezes Mookie Wilson. Tim Tuffle, the batter, hitting 203 with a homer and seven RBI. Tim Tuffle. Red Hot Keith Hernandez is on deck. You were talking earlier, Skip, about the Blue Jays scouts being here to look at Zane again as they were last week in Atlanta. As Zane misses with the curveball inside. And the Blue Jays starting the season they have an outstanding front line, but their fourth and fifth starters were suspect anyway. And now the key has gone down. Good play by Smith. That ball was sharply hit. Two down. Now the key has gone down. They're definite our indefinite need of pitching, especially left-handed pitching, as we watch Tuffle, a good fastball hitter, take this one right back up the middle. And as Skip said, Zane makes a nice play. And retires Tuffle. Hernandez is hitting 221, which doesn't sound like much, with four homers and 18 RBIs. He had seven of those 18 RBIs and two of those homers in one game against us. And he was hitting about 120 when the Mets came to Atlanta a week ago. We got him right back on the track. His divorce got finalized, and he's taking it out on all the National League pitchers. Keith, it's not their fault. I think they want Annie up for the settlement. The pitchers. One ball, no strikes. Two at all of the cup. Hernandez, among other things, is a Civil War history buff. They say he really knows his stuff about that period in our country's history. 3 0. Daryl Strawberry on deck. Three and one. Oh, 
as you said that, I was trying to go through my Civil War history and realized I knew none of it, so I'll just let that comment pass. I know Gettys Gettysburg's in Pennsylvania. Good, Billy. Thank you. Sherman marched on Georgia. And he spared the town of Madison, Georgia, because it was so beautiful. When you get the family down, drive over there and look. It's gorgeous. Did he go? No. It's a walk. numbers seven homers 11 RBI the right fielders in this city are having great seasons strawberries also tied for the league league and home runs leads it in slugging percentage runs scored and the guy across town has had a pretty good month himself the author Dave Winfield strike ball the strawberry 0 and 1 29 RBIs for the month of April. And they're trying to trade him. They can't trade him. I don't, I don't know why they keep bringing that up. Does it make any sense to me? Sells newspapers. A little bit low. A ball and a strike is the count. Kevin McReynolds is on deck. Wow, that's called a strike. That was a bit of a surprise to me and the strawberry too. Well, it looked like a curveball. Looked like it stayed. Well, I thought it was inside, if not high. So did strawberry. Two balls, two strikes. And maybe he didn't get the strike on that pitch because the previous pitch didn't appear to catch the strike zone. Didn't miss by much. Virgil wanted it. So did Smith. Three balls, two strikes. Normally you don't see two makeup calls in a row. Virgil is chattering away to Lee Wire, but he doesn't turn his head to show the umpire up. You do, you'll get a 60 day suspension. Line, right center base hit. The ball will die on the wet track, and Hernandez goes to third. On the corners with two up. For Kevin McReynolds. Here it is, a 3 2 pitch. Another curveball. Hernandez, of course, running on the pitch, 3 2 count. And Mets on the corners with two outs. It looked like a pretty good pitch, but it was hit by a pretty good hitter. A very good hitter. And they're on the corners with two out. The Mets have won five in a row. Including that heartbreaking game against us last week with a five run ninth inning. Fastball low to McReynolds. Gary Carter, a red hot hitter, is on deck. There's a good live fast strike. McReynolds makes his home in North Little Rock, Arkansas. The Mets got him in December of 1986 from the Padre. Through the fastball through there again. Now it's McReynolds turn to argue. A ball and two strikes. Strawberry at first base with 36 bases last year. Probably would have given McReynolds a couple of pitches to swing at. If he's going to run, most likely he'll run now with two strikes. Let's see if he's motoring from first. No. Two balls, two strikes. Phillies after two lead Houston 5 0. Cincinnati 2 0. After four and a half over Montreal. Tommy Helms managing the Reds now. Got it. Good low fire. 
Rick Reynolds is out. Strikeout number two for Smith. One hit, no runs, no errors, two runners left. We've played an inning. No score in New York. You want anything? How about a light? Bob, could you make that a Bud Light? If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Did you see? No. Did you? No. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Everybody is different. New bodies need Turtle Wax's new non-abrasive wax. Not so new bodies need the super hard shell finish of original Turtle Wax. And there's Turtle Wax Color Back Finish Restorer for older bodies. But the one thing everybody needs is Turtle Wax. Turtle Wax is for everybody. Temp Star. It was reliability brought down to earth. A full line of high-efficiency air conditioning systems. So reliable, Tempstar comes with five years of parts and labor protection. Where do you think they come from? Look in the yellow pages for Tempstar or Whirlpool Heating and Cooling or phone toll-free. Tuesday night, Cleveland clashes with Chicago and Michael Air Jordan while Denver and Seattle battle out west. The NBA playoffs. 805 Eastern on the Superstation, Tuesday. And Gerald Perry leads off the second inning. Gerald off to a slow start, hitting just 219. Curve a little outside, one ball, no strikes. Lee Wire is one of those umpires who is a frustrated play by play man. He doesn't just say ball one or strike one. He's uh, ball one outside. There's a strike two and one. It's even better. Some of the umpires will tell you that, that particular pitch missed by an inch or two. You start breaking it down to the millimeters, you know you're in trouble. He hit it a mile high, but Strawberry is about to have his third put out of the next. One down, here's Ozzie Virgil. Number nine, catcher. Oz the hero in the Atlanta win yesterday. You see his numbers for the year. Last ball outside, one ball, no strikes. Each team has a hit, neither has scored. Right up the shoot. Keith Hernandez calls for it in foul territory. Two down for Ken Obergfell, who's hitting 214 with a homer and four RBI. It's almost a shame that the Braves have had a couple of games against the Phillies where the bats seem to come around and then you run into a team like the Mets who have about 12 guys that can throw shutouts at you and especially someone like Darling as Darling misses with that pitch outside especially someone like Darling who you haven't beaten before. A ball on a strike to Obi. missed inside two balls and a strike darling out of Yale University as is a Bartlett Giamatti the president of the National League Tuffle should throw him out he does and darling breezes for the second in one two three fashion we move to the bottom half there is no score
Mitsubishi knows you want a truck to be tough. Tough and enough. But we also know you want more for your money. Tough and enough and enough. Mitsubishi Mighty Max trucks give you more. Up to 2.6 liters of power, a five-speed stick, more standard features for less than Toyota, Nissan, or Mazda. Even the lowest-priced macro can. Tough and enough. The new Mitsubishi Mighty Max trucks. Tough and enough and more. Mitsubishi, suddenly the obvious choice. Once Oren gets on his Murray, you just can't pry him off. But don't you worry. Our dinner reservations aren't till 9 anyway. When you pay good money, you want a good mower. Murray mowers are as tough and dependable as they come. Cutting, after cutting, after cutting, after cutting. I believe he's leaving. Maybe he's going to meet us at the restaurant. I bet you're right. I spend uh, three to five hours a day talking to my clients on the phone, buying and selling for them. So when our phone system packed up the other day, it was impossible. It was a mess. I make my livelihood on the phone, my commissions. Without a telephone, I'm broke. Enjoy Super Sports News, the official magazine of the Atlanta Braves. Just send 1195 to Super Sports News, Box 89162, Atlanta, Georgia, 30312. As Gary Carter digs in at the plate, let me remind you that this telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, other use of the pictures, descriptions, or the accounts of this game, as Gant those to Perry for the first out without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited brought a tear to my eye Carter out four three and Howard Johnson the better some other baseball news today the Baltimore Orioles released pitcher Scott McGregor and recalled pitchers John Habion and Jay Tibbs from Rochester Cubs sent pitcher Drew Hall outfielder Rolando Rooms to Iowa and recalled first baseman Mark Grace and pitcher Mike Capel from Iowa. I wonder if they're going to deal Leon Durham. If they brought Grace up, they're going to play him. He's a good looking prospect. Cardinals placed Danny Cox on the 15 day disabled list. Called up pitcher Gibson Alba from Louisville. And we told you about Jimmy Key. And in football, the Atlanta Falcons rescinded their offer to free agent tight end Arthur Cox, whatever that means. Into short center field, Deion James lopes in and hauls it in. See that? Falcons are doing a lot for scorecard sales next year. They're going to have a lot of new faces. Number 21, shortstop, Kevin Elster. Here's Kevin Elster, the shortstop, hitting 254. He hit the ball well against Atlanta last week. He came in that series hitting about 158. Now you see where he is now. General manager of the New York Yankees Lou Pannella here at the ballpark tonight. Obviously checking out Zane Smith. I wonder in that particular situation, if you don't make the deal, let's say Pinella doesn't make the deal for Zane Smith and Toronto does, if that will happen, is he watching to see how you hit against Zane Smith? Well, I think they're preparing an offer. And nothing in that inning would would make them not want to strike out number three for Zane. He gets them one, two, three. And after two, we have no score. Every cowboy's worst nightmare. Ah! And when the worst is over, you head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Bush. Does anybody want to start the campfire? <laughs> head for the mountains of Bush. Beer. 
If we keep digging in this bloody desert, we'll be changing oil and air filters every month. Calm down, Percy. Now you can receive a $3 rebate every time you buy a purulator air and oil filter together. <laughs> it's like getting free oil filters for life. <laughs> for life? Absolutely. But registration is for a limited time. How can you be free for life? Free for afterlife. Afterlife? For the best filter offer in this life or the next, look for this Purolator display. When it comes to work around the house, I am a klutz. But there is one thing I do well. <laughs> this is not it. <laughs> Maintaining my pool is. Well, thanks to the Pace two-step system, my pool is always clean and clear. It's practically foolproof. Pace concentrated chlorinator every few days. Pace shop regularly. You can't go wrong. I know, I've tried. Save up to $8 on the Pace two-step system. See your Pace retailer for details. Ronnie Gant leads off the third inning and standing in with a play-by-play -play story, here's Billy Sample. Okay, thanks, Skip. You're welcome. Darling delivers the first pitch again. Line over Howard Johnson's head in left field. So Ronnie Gann, who picked up his first two RBIs in yesterday's game, a home run in the sixth inning of that game. Life's embarrassing moments for Zane Smith. He forgot the helmet, so he has to go back to the dugout to get himself one. Zane obviously in a sacrifice situation. It was 44 degrees at game time. It hasn't gotten any warmer, has it? I was just starting to mention that. Zane squares, takes a pitch outside for a ball. Hernandez is about three feet away from the bag at first. Usual positioning. Zane swings, fouls it back. And when you consider the way Hernandez charges, and Howard Johnson's already about six to seven feet in front of the third base bag. When you consider that Hernandez, with his ten gold gloves, the way he charges, it's probably not a bad thing to do. To swing, that is. As Darling flips the courtesy throw to first. I like that play. If you've got a hitter who makes contact, and Smith does. This time he lays down a bunt. The perfect one. Carter to Tuffle. Score that 2 4. The sacrifice works, and Gantz down to second base with one out. And Deion James, the batter. Deion James. Deion on an 0 2 count, single to right field his first time up. Dion slowly moving that average up. Fifth in the National League last year with a 312 average. As you see Darling come set. Curveball catches the inside corner. Skip, you said that the Orioles release McGregor. Well, whoever they called up is pitching tonight. Jay Tibbs is pitching tonight. And with the same number as we see number 16 on the scoreboard. Texas batting in the fourth. They trail the Orioles one nothing. Darling. Fork ball swings and misses. Boy, what a night in Cincinnati. After everything that's gone before, after six innings, Ron Robinson has a perfect game against Montreal, and the Reds lead 3 nothing. I think he has outstanding stuff. Of course, he was a reliever, now starter. A great control for a reliever, and he throws in early 90s. The 0-2. Dion starts and stops his swing. Lee Wire checks with Fred Brocklander as you take a look at Brocklander there. Fred said no. Counts one and two. Ground ball to Hernandez. He'll take that unassisted. For the second out of the inning, Gant moves to third base. So with runner at third base, two outs, Andres Thomas. Andres line to right field of Daryl Strawberry his first time up. As we 
said earlier, Andres batting in a number two spot for the second day. As he takes a fastball inside. Elsewhere in the American League, Chicago is batting in their half of the second. No score against the Yankees. Kansas City has a 2 0 lead over Boston after four and a half. Nice stop by Carter. A lot of people try to, at least the New York press, try to write Carter off after last year. Hit only 235. We we're saying a, a, a number of injuries and and the bad knees were going to catch up with him, and he was the only spot that they were really not very strong with, but he's gotten off to a great start. <laughs> Darling catches the outside corners. Two balls, one strike. I think he got serious with the Nautilus during the offseason. He really got himself in a great shape. He looks good, and I believe he's still only 33 years old. The 2-1. This time he misses with a fastball outside. So Andres hitting at 217 has a cripple shot. 375 looks like three for eight. Three hopper to Johnson. Over to Hernandez. And the Braves sweat, but fail to score. After two and a half from Shea, no score. Atlanta Braves baseball is brought to you in part by Budweiser. Beechwood age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. You've never seen a shaver like this before. It's the new 3M Surgical Clipper by Remington. Hospitals are now using it, replacing blades to shave patients for surgery safely and comfortably. And you can benefit from this advanced technology by using the Remington Microscreen Rechargeable. It shaves as close as a blade or your money back. This convenient charger stand keeps it continually charged. And the Lady Remington Rechargeable also shaves without a cord. Advanced shaving technology from Remington. This is John Overly, and this is his farm. It's the Benjamin Moore Paint Farm. Out here, John tests thousands of Benjamin Moore paints to make sure they'll withstand years of sun and cold, rain and snow without cracking, peeling, or fading. These tests help make Benjamin Moore the only paint good enough for the Reynolds family and their new home. They wouldn't settle for anything less, would you? When something means so much, see your Benjamin Moore dealer. It's an exclusive NBA playoff doubleheader on the Superstation. First, in their pivotal third game, Cleveland tries to put the clamps on Chicago and Michael Air Jordan. Then the battle ships out west, where Denver tests the home court powers of Tom Chambers and Seattle. It all starts at 8.05 Eastern on the Superstation Tuesday. We're shooting for the best Superstation TBS at the Hoop. Welcome back. Pitcher Ron Darling will be the first batter Zane Smith will face in the Mets half the third inning. No score. The Braves have two hits. The Mets one. Darling at 167. That includes a double. Grounds a three hopper over the mound. Thomas to Perry. One away. Both pitchers have been working effectively, quickly and effectively, as Mookie Wilson. Swinging from the right side, getting a start. As this is the lineup manager Davey Johnson has against left-handed pitching. The Braves saw it twice in Atlanta last week when Zane Smith and Tom Glavin started. Curveball's too far inside. Mookie has a 10 game hitting streak. And he takes a curveball on the outside part of the plate. Count evens at one. Also in the American League tonight, Cleveland leading the American League East has a 2 0 lead over the Angels in their half of the fifth. Sports it's, Illustrated didn't pick them this year, did they? I don't know about Sports Illustrated's picks. 
the 2 1. Took something off that one. Wilson was way out in front. Count evens at two. Have they picked anybody right in the last? Well, we know about their jinx. In fact, maybe next week they ought to have a cover story on you. I hope not. The 2 2. Count runs full. seen anyone. We were talking a lot about Pete Rose tonight, obviously, for the, the incident that happened Saturday, but it reminds you a little bit of the way Rose rounds the bag. Wilson's about halfway, or not halfway, but maybe a good third of the way to second base when he rounds the bag in case something happens in the, in the outfield if someone bobbles the ball. I am negotiating with Sports Illustrated, though, not for next week, but they want to feature me in the swimsuit issue. And if you believe that, I got some mountain property I want to sell you in Florida. I tell you, about 12 different things ran through my mind when you said that. and I put your career in jeopardy, didn't I? <laughs> As Zane chases Wilson back to first base. So the Mets have a runner on in their half of the third for Tim Tuffle. Tim grounded back to the pitcher's first time up. Smith has a second throw to first base. It's a little bit above average, I believe. Fastball catches inside corner. Tuffle didn't think so, but Lee Wires had a couple of those discussions today, and he's won them all. And for you young pitchers, you could see Smith that time really change his delivery. Almost no leg kick at all to rush the ball to the plate with a fast runner at first base. We mentioned that a couple of times yesterday with Glavin, and especially with Glavin because he's so young. How he changes delivery, just as you said, Skip. And Tuffle fouls this one down the right field line. Murphy gives chase, but it'll be out of play. The count is 0 and 2 to Tim Tuffle. One out. Mets half the third. Outfield place Tuffle straight away. As Zane snap throws that one to first base, Wilson gets back. What we you were talking about, Skip, is the different looks. It gives you a lot of different looks. Uh, a good base stealer like Wilson. And if you can change your delivery, you give him a high leg kick one time, a snap throw another time. It gives him many more things to think about and it'll disrupt his timing somewhat. The 0 2. Bounces in the dirt. Bounced behind Virgil. He kicked it with his foot. If Wilson could have picked that up from the start, I think he could have advanced to second base. He looked like he's in the major indoor soccer league there for a minute. Some umbrellas are being raised around the ballpark again. So either it's starting to rain or people are pretending they're mushrooms. <laughs> Tuffle awaits the one two curveball just misses inside. Two two to count also in the American League as you get a look at a the color on my screen is bad. It looked like a maroon and yellow umbrella. Had a 43 minute rain delay as Tuffle calls time, as does Lee Wire. Tuffle stepped out of the box in Cincinnati, precipitated all that action Saturday. The balk was called and the Mets scored a run. The 2 2 is bounced in the dirt. Count runs full. And I would anticipate that Mookie Wilson will be running with the pitch. As you get a good look at Mookie and first base umpire Ed Montague. The 3-2. Gets it on the left side in the hole for base hit. Wilson rounds second. He'll go into third standing up. 
And the Mets have runners at the corners with one out. Nice job of hitting here by Tuffle. Thomas takes a couple of steps towards second, and the ball gets right through the vacant spot. Mookie Wilson can really run, and he makes it to third easily. And I don't think Andres was covering. Andres Thomas was covering the bag. I think that was the, the late move to back up the play. Gant had the bag covered for the steal possibility in case Tuffle swung and missed. As you see manager Chuck Tanner and Al Monchak have a discussion. Monchak's in charge of the infielders. As Keith Hernandez steps to the plate. Fouls the first pitch back. Out of play. As you see, he's had good success against Zane Smith in his career. Montreal didn't score in the seventh. I don't know if they got any hits. Ron Robinson had a perfect game through six. We don't know about the seventh. Former Bray Pascal Perez is pitching for the Expos as Hernandez calls time. Another former Brave gets a start tonight, Larry McWilliams for the Cardinals. He's done a good job for them. The 0 1. Wilson at third, Tuffle at first. One out. The 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss on a high fastball. We've already seen a couple of the Met hitters step out of the box. Zane has been working at a rapid pace. He's really picked up his motion. As you said a few times, Skip, from last year. As he steps off the rubber. And sometimes when you're in a roll as a pitcher, the hitters will step out to try to break that continuity that you have. The one-two. Fouled off at the plate. The count remains the same. Tuffle was running on the pitcher. He got a great jump. Hey, the one, two. Grounded foul by first base coach Bill Robinson. Bill Robinson coaching first. And Sam Palazzo at third base. Having a short conversation with Mookie Wilson. In this particular situation, he's probably telling him what to do in case Tuffle breaks to steal. Either he stays at third or he goes on the throw, or he waits till the throw goes past the pitcher's mound. And some teams will try to put a play on. They'll have a sequence of plays as Hernandez puts a little more rosin on his bat. Almost cold enough for this to turn into snow. It's rather chilly. You said it started at 44. We started at 44 degrees, and I dare say it's going to be in the mid-30s before the night's over. Is that cold enough to snow? Yeah, it won't stick. The one-two. Ball misses outside. If it snows tomorrow, we can start off call the Mets starting pitcher David Cohn. No, no, we shouldn't. Come do on, that. you've got to finish it. No, now. come on. No, I don't have the heart. Let's push that TBS sensor, will you? Two balls, two strikes, one out. Mets half of the third. They're threatening for the first time in the game. Mookie Wilson's at third base. Tim Tuffle is at first. With one out, Wilson singled. And on a 3-2 count, Tuffle single to left to put the Mets on the corners. Yeah. 
Smith is ready. The 2-2. Two -two. Curveballs popped up. Virgil runs behind the play. And it's about 12 rows in the seats. Again, we have a 2 2 count as Hernandez rosins his bat. Just checked with our partners, Ernie Johnson, Pete Van Weeren. I've got the ticker in there. Ron Robinson has a perfect game through eight innings tonight. We're at least a thousand miles away, and you still feel a sense of excitement over the potential of that development. Hernandez with a 2 2 count, one out. In this cold weather, uses no batting gloves. Curveballs foul down the left field side, out of play. Boy, he's a good hitter. He is spoiling some great pitches here. What you try to do is foul off the pitcher's pitch until you get yours. It's a constant battle. And obviously, with his hitting reputation, you know he's won a lot of them. He awaits. 2 2 again. Ground ball. Perry on his backhand. Decides to go to the plate. Then decides to shovel to Zane Smith. Mookie Wilson scores on the play. And the Mets go up 1 0. Perry did the right thing there. He took a look at home plate. You have no chance at a double play. The ball wasn't hit hard enough. He takes a look at home, doesn't think he's going to play there, but then he's lost any chance of the force, so he gets the runner at first base. It really wasn't hit hard enough to do anything but that. Wilson's going on contact and being a very speedy runner anyway. Sometimes you make a pitch that's too good. You don't get him to hit it hard enough to force a double play. Daryl Strawberry, who singled his first time up. Fouls went off at the plate. He's got a 697 slugging percentage. That's better than some teams. <laughs> Ours included. Now that you bring it up. I did try to lead you into that one. The 0-1 to Strawberry. Ground ball to the right side. Gerald takes it. Flips over to Zane Smith just in time to get Strawberry. But not before the Mets pick up a run on two hits. They leave one. And after three complete from Shea, the Mets won. Braves nothing. Hi, I'm Jim Martindale, and I'd like to introduce you to the Garden Weasel. It's a five-in-one tool that makes gardening fun and easy. The Garden Weasel's three rotary blades mesh with a scissor action breaking up the topsoil. They uproot young weeds before they get a start and mixes the leaves and weeds into the soil, and that's a mulch, and that's beneficial to your garden. The weasel cultivates to a uniform two-inch depth, protecting your plant's roots. Remove the center blade for cultivating around seedling rows and young bedding plants and vegetables. Use one blade for those hard-to-reach areas. Insert the short handle, and the weasel is perfect for plant boxes and greenhouses. The garden weasel is made of a rust-free alloy that's virtually self-cleaning. Simply hose it off and allow it to dry. If you have a friend who's into gardening like I am, the Garden Weasel makes a perfect gift. Look for this display. The Garden Weasel is available at Participating True Value, Ace, Service Star, HWI, Coast to Coast, Hardware Hank, and our own hardware stores. Makes a great gift for friends who garden. This is it. Your day in the sun. You've got experience. Talent. You know that being hungry isn't enough. You gotta have equipment you can depend on. The charcoal that brings power and consistency to your game. Then, and only then, can you bask in the glow of victory. Kings for charcoal, but the pros use. We go to the top half of the fourth inning. Dale Murphy will lead it off against Ron Darling and Pete Van Weeren, along with Ernie Johnson. On a cool, rainy night at Shea Stadium. We 
we crackers aren't used to this. <laughs> they aren't either. The count even, one ball, one strike on Murph. Murphy flying to right his first time. That ball it dips down as that split finger or fork ball that he really had to work on because his fingers aren't long and he had to practice a long time, but he has it perfected now. Murph takes a strike in the count even two and two. Murphy Griffey Perry do up here in the top half of the fourth inning with the Braves down by a run. And Darling with the two two just missed outside. Braves expect Dale Murphy to be their top RBI man this year and you can really tell the difference in the way the Mets and the Braves are hitting the ball every starter except the pitcher in the Mets lineup has as many RBIs this year or more than Dale Murphy. Tim Tuffle on to Hernandez. One out in the fourth. Now Ken Griffey who struck out his first time. have managed two hits against Ron Darling. Ronnie Gant got a third in the third inning. That's been the closest the Braves have come to scoring. Nothing and one. The count on Griffey. I think most pitchers believe they have a little bit of an edge in cold, damp weather like this. I agree. Nothing into the count. What most do is just put a hot ointment on their shoulder and even on their back. And as soon as they start to perspire a little bit, it really heats up. In fact, uh, the next time you put on your sweatshirt, you get heated up all over again. And uh, you don't wash that sweatshirt every day, especially if it's warm and it's in April and you, <laughs> and you need to pitch off it. Here's the 0-2, grounded toward first. Keith Hernandez will take it himself. Two down. Psychologically, the pitcher has an advantage. I always felt that a lot of the hitters really aren't too crazy about hitting in 40-degree weather. And if they hit it on the end of the bat or on the handles, it really stings. So their heart's not really in it. They're out there playing, but the pitcher, he's the warmest player there. So it's more or less like an everyday thing for him. Gerald Perry fly to right his first time. Braves down by a one nothing count. There's a drive to deep right center field. Strawberry will get to it. And Ron Darling has a one two three inning. We've completed three and a half at Shea. It's still one nothing New York. sedans the new Mitsubishi Galant its design is dynamic and spirited unlike Camry or Accord Galant offers the world's most advanced electronic suspension available anti-lock braking and was voted Japan's car of the year but Galant's most significant development isn't just the technology that's gone into it but the feeling you'll get out of it the new Mitsubishi Galant with prices starting around 10.7 it's suddenly the obvious choice Tuesday night 
Cleveland clashes with Chicago and Michael Air Jordan, while Denver and Seattle battle out west. The NBA playoffs. 8.05 Eastern on the Superstation, Tuesday. Bottom half of the fourth inning, Kevin McReynolds, Gary Carter, Howard Johnson do up against Zane Smith. McReynolds a strikeout victim his first time. He's one of the few Mets in a little bit of a slump right now. Just one hit in his last 12 at bats, three for his last 24. But he got off to a very good start, so his average still up there at an even 300. the 0 1 chased a bad pitch that time that fastball was away the count 0 and 2 that's where Smith likes to throw that fastball on strong right handed batter make him pull it and uh, ride away from him especially when he's down around the knees that one was a little bit high as you look at Alex Monchak Gerald Perry flipping to Zane Smith that's been responsible for the last three outs recorded by Smith. He got Hernandez and Strawberry on similar plays to end the third inning. One away in the fourth. Now Gary Carter. That pitch was too close to take. He had two strikes on him, and he threw a fastball on the outside part. It might have been a ball, but he had to uh, swing at it. Carter grounded out to second. Two outs in the ninth, and Robinson still has his perfect game in Cincinnati against Montreal. Zane Smith delivers low and away. Boy, what an odd story that would be. Pete Rose gets suspended for 30 days. Tommy Helms, the interim manager in the meantime, and if his first game winds up to be a perfect game for Ron Robinson, there won't be enough newsprint in New York to cover all the stories that will be written on that. Nothing to this game. Tom just says go out there and pitch a perfect game. Get us going. One ball, one strike, the count on Gary Carter. one nothing New York. We're in the bottom of the fourth. One and two. That's amazing about Robinson if he gets it. Well, even if he doesn't, he's had trouble starting this year and he pitches out of the bullpen on occasion. He has in the past, but he hasn't had a very good year so far and uh, he could turn it all around with this game tonight. Deep short, Andres Thomas with a long throw. No. Infield hit for Gary Carter, who does not get many of those. A beautiful play on both ends. Here's Thomas first getting to it and throwing on the run like a quarterback and the scoop by Perry. But Carter just did beat it. That's the fourth New York hit and it brings up Howard Johnson who fly to center and you can see that rain increasing in intensity. But the forecast tonight is not for any real heavy rain. Just some scattered showers here and there. So we should be able to play through this. Yeah, still the Mets want to get in four and a half innings and be leading one to nothing. Ball one, the count to Howard Johnson. Then they know it's an official game. Good snow. One man out. Carter not really a threat to do any running. There's a fly ball deep to right center field, but Dale Murphy's going to get there. Back to first goes Carter. Two men down in the bottom of the fourth. Now Kevin Elster, who got off to a terrible start. He was five for his first 41. First up, now he has nine hits in his last 17 at bats. He looked at a third strike his first time up in the second. People felt that last spring Elster performed well enough in spring training a year ago to win the everyday job. Swing and a miss at a fastball, nothing and one. But Frank Cashin will tell you that he's a believer in an everyday type of player, not necessarily a pitcher, but for his everyday players, he wants them to get a full year at the AAA level. The no hitter was broken up, the perfect game was broken up. Wallace Johnson single with two outs. And two strikes on him in the oh. ninth inning against Robinson. Quite a performance nonetheless. 
We've had two near no hitters now for the National League this year. Nolan Ryan just missed one against the Phillies last week. Mike Schmidt got the hit in the ninth inning. Eight in the third inning for Ryan. And to show you how baseball works tonight, Ryan pitching against the Phillies, trailing five to one in the fourth. Bounce toward third. It'll be a long throw for Overkill. And up, he's going to go to second. And he almost threw it away there. Ron Gantz saved him there. And that's all for the Mets in the fourth. They pick up a base hit. They leave one. And they continue to lead one nothing as we go to the fifth. Maybe we should just leave it here. You can't leave the car here. We're going to miss our plane. As an aircraft mechanic for Delta, Bob Swift doesn't meet passengers every day. Folks, need some help? Sure do. It's not exactly a jet engine, but you think you can fix it? Yeah. What time is your flight? Six o'clock. You think we'll make it? Oh, uh, you'll make it. Go ahead and try it. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Bob, what have you been doing? Oh, a little road work. Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. Your best, so we give you ours, and things keep looking better all the time. Blue sight, it's a science and an art. You get great color from the start. Blue sight, when it's coming from the heart, it's the science and the art of painting. Give it your best. Give it blue sight. World driving champion Jackie Stewart demonstrates how Scorpio offers all the performance you expect from a German touring sedan. Now, Jackie demonstrates one way Scorpio performs like no other German touring sedan. Scorpio, German performance you can be comfortable with at select Lincoln Mercury dealers. Wires. Simply brilliant. We go to the top half of the fifth inning. There's your score. It'll be Virgil Obrick, Felon Gant do up against Ron Darling. And during our commercial break, we learned that not only did Ron Robinson lose his perfect game and no hitter with two outs in the ninth inning when Wallace Johnson got a two strike base hit, but now he's lost the shutout. Tim Raines just homered to make it 3 2. Now he's just trying to win the game. Ozzie Virgil fouled out to the first baseman his first time up. A ball and no strikes. That breaking ball got completely away from Darling. Darling's had good control for the most part tonight. He's been behind in the count a couple of times, but he hasn't walked anybody. There's a strike to make it two and one. Even though Darling came into the season with a career record of 56 wins and 32 losses, Davey Johnson feels that he is really just now learning how to pitch up here. Grounded to short. It's going to be a long throw for Elster, but he gets Virgil easily. One away. You see the rain continuing to come down here at Shea. Ken Obergfell grounded out to second his first time. David Johnson feels that Darling got by simply on his good arm over those first few years, and now he's learned how to pitch on the nights when he doesn't maybe have his best stuff. Takes some pitchers longer than others, and sometimes it's just one pitch. If Bruce Suter didn't develop the split finger fastball, he might never have made it with any success in the major league. He was about a day away yeah. from his release in the minors when he was taught that pitch. Yeah. Fred Martin taught it to him. Two and oh the count on Obrick fell. Braves trail by a run. The runs and the hits have been tough to come by for Atlanta this year. Two and one now and Obrick fell. Pitchers uh, make the adjustment as they go along. If they lose a little off their fastball, they experiment maybe with a screwball or something of that nature. And if they can make that adjustment, they just continue on their merry way and, and win ball games at a major league. 
And the count now three and one on Oberkfell. An unusual set of numbers there for a left hand hitter. Popped him up. Kevin Elster. Two down. That'll bring up Ronnie Gant, who has one of Atlanta's two hits. He singled to left field back in the third. Since that base hit, Darling has retired eight in a row. John Quinn, who was the general manager of the Braves in Milwaukee and in Boston, had a theory on pitchers and uh, pretty accurate. He said he didn't think a pitcher learned how to pitch. Now we're going back to the 50s, but I think it still applies. He didn't think a pitcher really knew how to pitch until he's 27 years old. This guy out in the mound is 27. Zane Smith is around that age. Nothing in one to count. Cincinnati beat him three to two. Robinson over Perez. And the count nothing in two now on Ron Gant. Smith and Darling the same age. 27. Here's the 0 2 now to Gant. Wasted a fastball away. It's one and two. But then you see some kids come along. Braves got some, as you know, and Glavin and Pete Smith there, like 22 years old. They still have to learn a lot, but they seem to be have on the job training here. In fact, Chuck Tanner and Ozzie Virgil both saying about Tom Glavin yesterday that the game he pitched yesterday probably had his worst stuff of the year, but he was able to get through seven yep. innings, give up only four hits, had to pitch a little more instead of just throw. That was able to do that. Gant drives one down that left field line. It's fouled by a couple of feet. A catcher can help a pitcher a lot. A good catcher can help a pitcher along on that particular day where he doesn't have his stuff, kind of nurse him along and get him to pitch to the spots a little bit more and get his good stuff over when he's behind and really help him. This is not unusual weather for Ronnie Gant. We're playing in 40 degree weather with the rain. He was telling us about a series that Richmond played up in Maine early in the year when Ron was a member of that Richmond club, and every night was like this. Here's the 2 2. He got it. Second strikeout for Ron Darling. He has retired nine straight, and this is now an official ball game. We go to the bottom half of the fifth 1 0 New York. I'm State Farm Agent Stan Griffin. Just talked to two of my car insurance policy holders, Bob and Doris Rhodes. They're off on another trip. They're so-called retired folks. They sure get around. And they get a real feeling of security, seeing all those State Farm offices just about anywhere they drive. If they should ever run into trouble, they know a State Farm agent is there to help them get back on the road again. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Now you can take your car to the car wash or take the car wash to your car. The Zipwax Hydro System from Turtle Wax. It's like having an automatic car wash in your driveway. The Hydro System powers away dirt and grime and leaves the kind of shine and protection Turtle Wax is famous for. The Zipwax Hydro System from Turtle Wax. The easiest way you can wash and wax your car. An overworked lawyer, an undercover cop, in a city where everyone has a price. My client will make bail. They're the best that money can't buy. Hang on tight, partner. Oh, I see. The ride gets rougher than this. You betcha. Robocop's Peter Weller, Sam Elliott, Shakedown, Rated R. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. Glenn Ford and Henry Fonda, riding and roping, the Rounders. 10.15 Eastern on... Superstation TV, yes, that's tonight. Pitcher Ron Darling will lead off the bottom half of the fifth inning for New York. One run, four hits for the Mets, no runs, two hits for the Braves. Darling go for one, he grounded out to short his first time. And Zane Smith is ahead, nothing and one. 
Well, we finally have received official word what we expected about Pete Rose. He will appeal the 30 day suspension. We had heard nothing official on whether he was going to appeal it or not. We suspected he would, and now we find out that he will. I think the press might uh, reduce that sentence of 30 days. Darling trying to put his way on. He got one and two. The census here in the press box and in the press lounge before the game was that it was a little harsh, but I don't know. Uh, some people might not agree, but 30 days uh, is a considerable length of time when you think that most of the time it's been between five and ten days yeah. for suspensions. There's the one two off the end of the bat foul. My goodness, if Pete Rose is given a 30 day suspension for bumping an umpire, Billy Martin wouldn't have been around much yeah. under those kind of rules or Leo DeRocher. Here's the one two. Two and two. But I think what Mr. Giamatti is doing and you can't blame him for this. He's just trying to get a message across that yeah. physical contact with umpires is just not going to be tolerated. Line to right field. Murphy right there one down. And I'm wondering if the fans hadn't responded by throwing everything but themselves on the field after that it might not have been as severe a penalty but that led to the fans being real disruptive too. Well, we'll just have to see how, how it works out. He will appeal it. It just came over the ticker. Mookie Wilson has struck out and singled. He has scored the only run in the game. Davey Johnson said the fans were throwing money. They were throwing batteries. He said somebody even threw a marble. And he said my biggest question about that was why would anyone go to a ball game with a marble in their pocket? Or golf balls. I mean, tee it up, man. Radios. Here's the 01. Smith knocked it down. Let's see if he can throw him out. He got him. Good recovery by Zane Smith, who was one of the better fielding pitchers in baseball. Well, let's see where that hit him. Boy, it hit solid. Maybe he deflected it with his glove. Oh boy, it looked like it hit him in the knee after kicking off the glove. There's, he's saying that he's all right. So two men are out now in the bottom of the fifth, and Tim Tuffle will step in. He's bounced to the pitcher and singled. That's maintaining a one nothing lead. Their only run came in the third on base hits by Wilson and Tuffle and a ground out by Keith Hernandez who has now driven in 11 runs. Make it 10 against the Braves this you know, year. On, on that big rhubarb in Cincinnati now Nick Asaski has prim been primarily a, an outfielder. He is a first baseman for the Reds. And uh, he probably thought that the, the the batter was out but many first basemen in that particular play they'll fire that ball home just in case and get that runner trying to score all the way from second on a ground ball to short and if that had happened uh, we don't have an incident at all that's right but there was no throw home and in fact one of the umpires said if he had tried to throw home later Robinson the coach was blocking his view and they would have called uh, the runner out for the coach being in the way two and two the count now and Tim Tuffle. Two men out, base is empty. He got a fastball on the inside corner. Fourth strikeout for Zane Smith, and that's it for the Mets in the fifth. We go to inning six, still one nothing, New York. He's come. He'll be here. As long as I've known Tom, I need help. He's there. Or still shorthand. Yep. Sure, I'm glad to see you. Reckon you are. Stay with you. Figured you wouldn't mind.
last tray's rounded up, you head for the mountains. Bush. And the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Well, sure are you one. How about this in here? Head for the mountains of Bush beer. It's Taster's Choice Colombian Select with half the caffeine. Get a full cup of flavor with only half the caffeine. The kind of coffee you savor from all Colombian beans. Colombian Select, rich, real coffee with half the caffeine. A full cup of flavor, only half the caffeine. Taster's Choice Colombian Select. The all-new Braves Clubhouse Collection Catalog is now available. To order your 1988 catalog, send your name, address, and $1 to Braves Catalog, P.O. Box 4006, Atlanta, Georgia, 30302. Top of the sixth, here's Ernie. Thank you, Professor. Zane Smith just did a little roller out in front of home plate, and he's thrown out for out number one. Now Dion James with one away. James is singled and grounded out. Getting back to uh, the first baseman fielding a throw from the shortstop with a runner at second base and two outs. And not letting the runner score from second base by firing home if you think there's at least been a chance a batter is going to be safe. This goes back to a pitcher's play. When you're a pitcher and there's a play at first base where you've got to cover first and there's a runner at second base advancing on the ground ball. You're trained as soon as you catch the ball and touch the base to turn around and make sure that guy's not trying to break for home. Steve Bedrosian in the All Star game That's last right. year. That's right. That's a good example, Pete. He did it. He got a big runner at the plate. You're always supposed to be alert as to a runner trying to come around from second and score on a ground up. And they'll try it with two outs. They'll just keep on going. And James is down on strike. You don't normally see Deion James chase as bad a pitch as this. This was nowhere as near being a strike. Way out of the strike zone. That's that fork ball that's going down and away. Oh, Bula Bula. That's Darling. He played at Yale. And he was a football player. And here's a curveball in there. Oh, and one. He was with Texas once. That turned out to be a great trade, didn't it, for uh, sure the did. New York Mets? They traded Lee Mazzilli to Texas for Darling and Walt Terrell. Signed back Mazzilli as a free agent, traded Terrell to Detroit for Howard Johnson. So they got Darling, Mazzilli, and Howard Johnson for nothing. Fly ball center. The Braves are going quietly here in the sixth. Mookie takes care of it. We move to the bottom half. It's still one to nothing, New York. Imagine doing this to your car. It's unthinkable. Yet some car waxes and polishes contain abrasives that can scratch your car. Introducing new Armor All Car Wax with no harsh abrasives with a polishing ingredient so fine it won't scratch your car. Armor All Car Wax. It shines and protects, but it won't scratch. Mitsubishi knows you want a truck to be tough. tough and but we also know you want more for your money. Tough and enough, and enough. Mitsubishi Mighty Max trucks give you more. Up to 2.6 liters of power, a five-speed stick, more standard features for less than Toyota, Nissan, or Mazda. Even the lowest-priced macro can. The new Mitsubishi Mighty Max trucks. Tough and enough, Mitsubishi, suddenly the obvious choice. It's an exclusive NBA playoff doubleheader on the Superstation. First, in their pivotal third game, Cleveland tries to put the clamps on Chicago and Michael, Air, Jordan. Then the battle shifts out west, where Denver tests the home court powers of Tom Chambers and Seattle. It all starts at 8.05 Eastern on the Superstation Tuesday. We're shooting for the best Superstation TBS at the 
NBA playoff action resumes on the Superstation tomorrow night. Doubleheader, Chicago at Cleveland, game three of their series, followed by Denver at Seattle. And Wednesday night, Skip Carey will be in the fourth building from the left, along with Rick Barry for the Celtics and Knicks, game three of their series. Here's Keith Hernandez leading off the bottom of the six. He's walked and got an RBI and a ground out. A good pitch by Smith, but he grounded a first. Ball wasn't hit hard enough for Perry to come home with the ball. They had to be satisfied with retiring Hernandez and Mookie Wilson scored the only run on this ball game. Smith last time out against New York pitched seven shutout innings. That's in the right field they said. by Hernandez who was a player of the week in the National League. Boy he is really fattened up on the Braves this year. And that seven RBI game and then a big two run homer in the series last week. Now he's driven in the only run of the game and a leadoff single here in the sixth inning. He was a player of the week in the National League batting 400 four homers and 14 RBIs. Ken Urbeck of the Minnesota Twins was the American League player of the week at 478 four homers and seven RBI. It appears to me and I don't know that Daryl Strawberry is lifting his right foot a lot more than he did last year. You've seen Jose Cruz lift up his right foot before he swings. Seems like Strawberry is doing it a little more this year. Oh and two. He has 154 homers that ties a Met record. Dave Kingman held it at 154. Strawberry obviously will be number one. Next time he pops one. Final score in from Cleveland, the Indians shut out the Angels 3-0. A two-hitter for Greg Swindell. He's now 6-0 for the Indians. One of the big reasons they are where they are. Last year he won about two games. He was out most of the year. Yankees, as you know, interested in Zane Smith. They have their brass here tonight. Curveball outside. Toronto also interested in Toronto. They've lost Jimmy Key for a while. Our arthroscopic surgery on his elbow. We don't know how long he'll be out, but he's one of the best pitchers in that league last year. Toronto's really having some problems getting started, and they've been suffering some injuries. Foul away. Strawberry is singled and grounded out. Boy, he gets a lot of leverage. He's about 6'6. Can hit the ball out of the ballpark in any direction. Braves play him straight away. Horse deep. That is it on a fastball. Caught looking is Daryl Strawberry, who's batting about 150, if that, against Zane Smith. He must have been looking for the breaking ball here. That fastball is right there. Paid attendance 20,869. McReynolds is 0 for 2. Bounce foul, pass third. The Yankees leading the White Sox two to one after four. They're now in the top of the fifth. Baltimore is winning over Texas one nothing in the fourth. They've got a crowd of over 40,000 to welcome back the Orioles from that horrendous road trip. Kansas City leading Boston at Fenway two to nothing in the seventh. Oakland two, Detroit one in the bottom of the eighth. Good foul. That Yankee White Sox game like a Dodgers old timers game. Tommy John against Jerry Royce. We haven't checked up on it, but I think there's more guys 40 years old pitching in a major leagues this year than ever. And most of them pitching well. Of course, if you don't pitch well, you're not going to hang around very long. 
He sawed him off. Murphy's going to have to make a catch. Goes out of his glove. He couldn't hold on. Hernandez took a chance and ran down to second. If Murphy catches it, it's a double play. But it was a tremendous effort by the big guy. And he almost holds on here. Well, it didn't hit him in the glove. Hit him above the glove, right on the wrist. Now, he feels he should have had it. You can tell by his reaction out there. Any ball that Murphy is able to get to, he feels he should catch. Sliding along, you saw in the replay, it hit above his glove. Tear him off. Now Virgil and Smith together, talking about Gary Carter. Braves want him to hit one on the ground. He's a good double play prospect. But he's hit safely now. Six straight. Off to a good start. One to nothing, New York. Two on and one down. Fastball outside. The Phillies leading Houston six to one, top of the seventh at Philadelphia. Low. tonight Pittsburgh at Los Angeles the Cubs at San Diego and the Cardinals play at San Francisco I with a breaking ball three and all Carter looking to third to see if he's got a green light the Braves have about half that number of runs Looked like he had it. If he wanted a swing, he could have. Braves bullpen active now. Charlie Paleo begins to throw. Now the 3-1 pitch. High drive, left center field, back toward the wall. It should be caught and will be by Deion James. On a dry day, he might have had one. With the overcast and the rain, the ball doesn't carry, and Gary Carter had James on the warning track in deep left center. So the Braves getting a break there. There's Charlie Paleo starting to throw. Besides the rain and the cool weather, you also have a little breeze blowing in from center field, so fly balls are really going to die. Howard Johnson has flied out twice. Smith trying to get through it, keep it at one to nothing. He's allowed six hits. The Braves have two hits off Darling. McReynolds is at first, and Hernandez at second, and the pitch is outside. Our next telecast is Friday night against the Phillies, and air time is early. It's 5:35. First pitch at 5:40. There'll be no telecast from Montreal. Braves radio only tomorrow night and Braves radio on Wednesday and Thursday from Montreal. There you see the flag blowing and the wind is blowing toward right. So that cuts it down and left. Ball no strikes. Smith and Virgil can't get together on the sign. Continues to rain, but not hard enough to haul play. Sequence of signs with a runner at second. Drill the left center. James should catch this one. Then he does. Two hard hit balls, two outs, and two stranded. And we go to the seventh inning, one to nothing, New York. Come in! The rest! 
Even when all of Company B heads for the phone, it's no problem for Gail Godfrey. Delta Airlines, Gail Godfrey. The Alpha out of London, Texas. Yes, that is confirmed. I got some friends who want to talk to you now. Just hold on a second. Thank you. Cincinnati, Ohio. New York City. Monroe, Louisiana. Albuquerque, New Mexico. San Jose, California. Portland, Oregon. Here, Montana. You're all set. Thank you for calling, Delta. Bye-bye. Hi, Gail. Did you get many calls this afternoon? One. Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. Come on, everybody, but let's get a fresh new dance. But the kids is gonna do it. There's nothing to it. Just the fun night fly. We have tail left dance fly. When the music's hot, have a call, Bud Light. Do the Bud Light fly. Spot McKenzie parties with only Bud Light. He knows everything else is just a light. This is it, your day in the sun. You've got experience, talent. You know that being hungry isn't enough. You gotta have equipment you can depend on. The charcoal that brings power and consistency to your game. Then, and only then, can you bask in the glow of victory. Kings for charcoal, but the pros use. It's official. The Goodwill Games will be a happening event in 1994 and 98. Get the details on Sports Tonight at 11.30 Eastern on CNN. We're going to the top of the seventh inning. Skip Curry and Ernie Johnson with you now on Braves TV. Murphy leads it off. Mike Schmidt just hit his 534th home run. That ties him with Jimmy Fox for eighth place on the all-time list. The Phillies are leading in that game seven to one at Philadelphia. There's a bounder to short. It's going to be one down. One pitch, one out in the seventh. Murphy 0 for 3, and here's Ken Griffey, who's 0 for 2. Just about everybody is 0 for something, although James has one hit and Gant the other. That's that makes not too well. Tough, That's pretty tough right there. 13 in a row set down by Dolly. Now Griffey. One and oh. That's well hit. Base hit to center for Ken Griffey. And the batter, Gerald Perry. Perry is 0 for 2 with a fly ball to right and a line drive to right. He hit that ball hard the last time, but Strawberry caught up to it. The Reds beat Montreal 3-2. Ron Robinson had a perfect game for eight and two-thirds innings. Gave up a single and then a home run and won it 3-2. NBA basketball, Detroit 89, Washington 85, with four minutes to go in the fourth. They would eliminate Washington if that holds up. A runner at first, Griffey. Curve is low. Perry was out taking extra batting today. Hockey, New Jersey and Boston, 3-3 in the third. That's where Gary Thorne, our pal who does the Mets games, is tonight doing the New Jersey Devils hockey match. And the pitch. Hello, we want to remind everyone that this weekend, the Phillies in town, and it's the Disney World Series coming to town. They provide a spectacular show. A lot of things happening in the month of May. Stein night on Friday, May 27th. The Cardinals will pay us a visit. Bouncer in the right field base hit. Griffey will hold at second. And Perry squeezes one through. And Atlanta with a tying run at second base. And only one out. Catcher on the Virgil. Virgil. May 28th. It's Heinz Team Jersey Day, Jersey Day, and then the Beach Boys pay us a visit on Sunday, May 29th. So make your plans to be with us. 
at the stadium. Next home stand finds Philadelphia coming in, followed by Montreal. Then the Braves go on the road for about almost two weeks. Where do we go to? We go everywhere, don't we? Everywhere in the Midwest. St. Louis, Chicago, Pittsburgh. I like the Beach Boys, the Braves really get around. <laughs> foul, straight foul. All in one. Virgil's fouled out and grounded out. Griffey's at second base and Perry at first. Outside, no one warming for them, but the ground crew has pulled the tarpaulin off the mound in the bullpen. He's kind of managing himself. He, you know, he, he's been around a long time. He says, well, let's see. They're getting in a little trouble now. I better get the tarp off. There he is. Everybody wants to be the yeah. manager. Some of them would do a pretty good job at it. One ball, one strike. Look at Tommy Elves. Nothing to this game. He's one and all. Pop foul out of play. One and two. Look, Ma. Crowd of 20,000 on a rainy, cold night in New York. Greeting their favorites, the Mets, who just came back back from a very successful road trip. And the pitch to Virgil. Boy, nice play, Carter. The Mets are a half game back of the Pirates. Pittsburgh, the surprise. 17 and 6. That Carter can still handle things behind that yeah. plate. Started his career as an outfielder. Two balls and two strikes. What was the injury? It was at Park Jerry. Remember, we were there. He collided with somebody and they thought he was. His career was in jeopardy, wasn't yeah. it? I can't remember exactly what happened. I can't either. I know there was an injury involved where they wondered whether he's going to make it as a ball player. And the pitch. That is going to be fielded one play and a nice play by Tuffle. Virgil couldn't get it through almost but not quite. He had no play at second so he came to first for out number two. That's a good at bat for Ur Virgil, even though it didn't work out for him. Tuffle's an outstanding second baseman. But he's a much better hitter when he uses all the field and he hit that ball hard. Well, let's see. Ken Obergfell, the batter. Ron Gann is on deck. The old veteran at the plate, the rookie, Gant. They got a left-handed batter up there. Let's see if they pitch to him with a base open and two outs. Nope. No, nope, they won't. Well, let's see what Chuck Tanner does. Will Gann hit or will he go to Ted Simmons or someone like that? Right now, it looks like Gann will bat. He singled the first time up. Gann yeah. struck out in the fifth. And just missed a double in the fifth. It went hard down the left field line, but foul. This is a game of hunches. What works today might just backfire tomorrow. That's what makes it so interesting. Gant will bat with the bases loaded and two down. Tying run at first and the go ahead run at second in the person of Gerald Perry who can score easily on a single. Intentional walk is okay, but it does put pressure on the pitcher. He knows he can't walk anybody else, and he's got to throw strikes, and he'll work from the stretch. He's pausing high. 
You can pause anywhere in your stretch. Most pause right off your belt, but uh, Darling pauses almost well off his letters. Just as long as you stop. The umpire doesn't care where. Would be a nice time for a balk. Yeah, it? I was just thinking about that, too. And Homer just a day. One ball, one strike. Bases loaded in a one to nothing game, New York. One and two. That was a fastball, high and away. Runners, Griffey is a third. Carries that second over fell at first. That man cheering for a strikeout. One ball, two strikes. Boy, this will do this kid a world of good. That's a big clutch hit. He hit a pretty good pitch, a fastball down and in. About a foot and a half fair down that left field line, and it rattled around in the corner. McReynolds didn't think that he could pull Ron Darling. We said he just missed a double that way. Well, this time he delivered. Albert Fell scoring all the way from third. Here's Zane Smith now. He's been staked to a two-run lead. Foul away on a good swing. You forget about the batting averages. Give me the guy that gets that kind of hit in that kind of spot. Last couple of games, Gann has hit the ball. He had the homer yesterday. A two-run job. And today he is two for three with three hard hit balls. Check it. Two. Struck out once. Now an 0-2 pitch to Zane Smith. A little bit high. Little pop should be caught by Johnson at third. And it is. But the Braves punch over three. We move to the bottom of the seventh. Three to one Atlanta. That was a great answer. Where'd you learn about computers? In the Army. Oh, you were in the Army? Yeah. And now they're helping pay your way through college. How come you know so much? How do you think I got here? Qualify for the GI Bill and the Army College Fund and earn $17,000 for college for only a two-year enlistment or $25,200 for a four-year enlistment. What you doing here? Airborne. You were airborne? Find your future in the Army. You used to jump out of airplanes? This is where we make the new 3M Surgical Clipper by Remington. Hospitals are now using this advanced product, replacing blades, to shave patients for surgery safely and comfortably. You can also benefit from Remington's advanced technology. This charger stand keeps the Remington microscreen rechargeable, continually charged. It never needs a cord, and it shaves as close as a blade or your money back. And the Lady Remington rechargeable also shaves without a cord. Advanced shaving technology, only from Remington. This is John Overly, and this is his farm. It's the Benjamin Moore Paint Farm. Out here, John tests thousands of Benjamin Moore paints to make sure they'll withstand years of sun and cold, rain and snow without cracking, peeling, or fading. These tests help make Benjamin Moore the only paint good enough for the Reynolds family and their new home. They wouldn't settle for anything less, would you? When something means so much, see your Benjamin Moore dealer. Glenn Ford and Henry Fonda, riding and roping, the Rounders, 10:15 Eastern on Superstation TV. That's tonight. 
two Brent Busters sign up to break a string of horses and pandemonium results on the movie The Rounders starring Glenn Ford and Henry Fonda right after the game tonight on CBS. We've got a couple of changes. Albert Hall is now in center field as he moved to the bottom of the seventh and Deion James moves from center to left. Griffey is out. Alster leads it off and Lenny Dykstra has a bat. He's going to hit for Darling. Smith with his first pitch. Strike call, 0 and 1. They have a right hander loosing in their bullpen. Breaking ball doesn't get in. One ball, one strike. Corner. McDowell is throwing for them. Roger McDowell. A little bit high, two and two. They got great coverage here in New York. You buy about three papers to keep up with everything. Tomorrow, you can't wait until you read all about the Rose incident. Here's a base hit to left. Dying run will come to the plate. The person of Len Dykstra, the Braves, have no one throwing in their pen at the moment, but now they start to stir. They did have Dykstra out there, but now Barry Lyons is swinging a bat. So maybe they're going to save Dykstra till later. There's Lyons. They went from the lefty Dykstra as Acker gets up to Barry Lyons, a right-handed hitting catcher. Number 33, Barry Lyon. Nobody out. Fast strike on one. Lyons, if he runs like most catchers, Austin Mocker starts to throw. Lyons runs like most catchers. He's a double play prospect. A little bit high. Smith has been very animated tonight for him. He's been working hard and throwing hard. Following through a little harder than usual. He's been on top of it. One and two. Well, Lou Pinella down the way looking on has gotten an eyeful. I don't know if anything's going to happen, but I know Bobby Cox is Two games in a row they've watched Smith pitch. Yep. He shut him out for seven innings last time. Bobby's on his way to town tonight. I, I don't know if he's here yet, but he and Pinella, I think, are meeting tomorrow. And Jimmy Key, as we mentioned earlier, now undergoing arthroscopic surgery. So Toronto desperate for a left hander. One ball, two strikes. Especially on that outside fastball, you can see Smith really let it out. Right there is it. That's a double play. Beautiful play by Zane Smith. He had to hold just a second, then he got it to Thomas and over to first for two. Perry almost comes off the bag at first base. And both Gant and Thomas are around second base here. That could have been a disaster. Now but the double play seven. is in effect. That's not supposed to happen, is it? Or no, it's not. Uh, they're supposed to know before the batter even swings. A lot of times the pitcher will turn around and look at the second baseman or shortstop and say, who's covering in case they hit the ball to me? Obviously, they didn't get together on it, but it's not going to hurt because Mookie's out, too. Round number three. So Smith, after giving up a base hit, gets him. 
We've completed seven and three one. It's more effective than the leading men's deodorant. It's been proven better in clinical tests at blocking odor. It's Old Spice Fast Track Wide Deodorant. It blocks odor better. My athlete's foot kept flaring up. I'd put it out and it'd just flare up again. Then my doctor told me about Tenactin. It cures recurring athlete's foot. Use it regularly and it'll keep the fire from coming back. Tenactin puts the fire out for good. Maybe we should just leave it here. You can't leave the car here. We're gonna miss our plane. As an aircraft mechanic for Delta, Bob Swift doesn't meet passengers every day. Folks, need some help? Sure do. It's not exactly a jet engine, but you think you can fix it? Yeah. What time are you flying? Six o'clock. You think we'll make it? Oh, uh, you'll make it. Go ahead and try it. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Bob, what have you been doing? Oh, a little road work. Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. Your scoreboard, you heard about the Cincinnati game over Montreal 3 2, Robinson 8 2 thirds, perfect game. And Philadelphia, who last time against Nolan Ryan, well, he no hit him for 8 and a third. They knocked him out today. Cubs leading 2 to nothing, and later St. Louis to San Francisco. In the American, Baltimore, in front of their home folks, they expected over 45,000 tonight, and they're rewarding them. Two to nothing, Kansas City over Boston at a tough place, Fenway Park, to pitch a shutout. And Swindell is now 6 0 with that win for Cleveland. 2 2, Oakland, Detroit, extra innings. New York, 3 to 1 over the White Sox at White Sox Park. And at Milwaukee County Stadium, the Brewers are winning. No score at Seattle. And here it is 3 to 1, Atlanta, as we move to the eighth inning. Deion James leads it off, and here's Scott. Okay, Ernie, thank you. Roger McDowell on the pitch for the Mets, and you see his numbers on the air. A few more couldn't hurt. James is one for three, singled back in the first. Ron Darling pitched well, but not well enough. Tim Tuffle digs it out. One pitch, one out. In the eighth. Darling went seven innings, allowed five hits, three runs. They were all earned. He walked one. That was intentional. He struck out three, and Ron Gant got the big blow against him. Here's Andres Thomas. A new baseball put into play by Lee Wire, the home plate umpire. Well, Pete leaves us tomorrow and heads for Cleveland, where the Bulls and Cavaliers will play. And that'll be followed by Denver at Seattle. Can't promote too much. Anymore. I'm afraid to ask you your schedule. Well, tomorrow <laughs> night I'll stay in the room with my Knicks media guide. <laughs> Getting ready for Wednesday. I have the Knicks in Boston here, and then I either stay here, go to Milwaukee, or go home. I don't know. That's right. <laughs> Billy Sample and I will go to Montreal, check out the Expos. Okay, you do that. That's after tomorrow night's game. And Pete goes to either Houston or <laughs> he doesn't know. Or he stays in Cleveland. Don McGuire, our executive producer, has an airline guide and a Ouija board, and he makes the call. From his comfortable office in Atlanta, he doesn't have to go anywhere. Two balls, two strikes. Full count on Thomas, three and two. I don't know if we've complimented Billy Payne on a great effort to get the Olympics in Atlanta for 1996. Boy, well, he's done a great job, and uh, that'd be a coup. Still working on it. They won't have a decision for some time. Deep short, long throw by Ulster. Good play by him and by Keith Hernandez. Two up. And Murphy will hit. Also, the naming of Grant Field after Bobby Dodd. Oh, nice. that's terrific. Boy, it's just, this is a nice play. This is a play that all scouts look for when they're scouting a shortstop. How does he throw from the hole? Elster passes a test. Well, 
how many will Michael Jordan score tomorrow? What a what an athlete! Something. And they won by two. Over a hundred points in two games. I think that's a record in playoffs. In the playoffs. I saw him a couple of years ago. He went for 61 against the Celtics, and they lost 61 or 63. He's a great player. You've seen him play. I've seen him just a couple of times. You've seen him play a lot. You know what scares me? That he his goes tongue? up on. Yeah, he's got his tongue out. Yeah. He's up there with all those elbows flying around and his tongue out. You would just hope that he never gets hit in the jaw. Two balls and a strike. Speaking of the NBA, Detroit and Washington go to overtime tied at 98. Two balls and a strike on Murph. He is flying to right, bounced to second, bounced to short. And bounced to short again. Elster Lolly popped the ball over there. But he hears about that in the dugout. McDowell gets three infield roller. Zane Smith marches to the mound to pitch the bottom of the eighth with a 3 1 lead. Up here, you catch him with experience. And when you've got them where you want them, you head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Push. How are those horses doing? What horses? <laughs> head for the mountains of Bush beer. Once you look through a Minolta Maxim, you'll never see life the same way again. Maxim, the world's first SLR with built-in autofocus. 26 autofocus lenses capture the action as only you see it. You and Minolta Maxim bring creativity to life. The Maxim system. Only from the mind of Minolta. Now you can take your car to the car wash or take the car wash to your car. The Zipwax Hydro System from Turtle Wax. The easiest way to give your car a Turtle Wax shine. The Zipwax Hydro System from Turtle Wax. I love keeping my car shiny, so I switched to ClearGuard Protectant. It's from Turtle Wax. You know Armor All is mostly water, but ClearGuard's all shine. Now I hear they've got tests that prove it, but here's all the proof I need. ClearGuard shines better, shines longer. Atlanta Braves baseball is brought to you in part by Budweiser. Beechwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Bottom of the eighth, Tim Tuffle will lead it off. Some tough outs here. Tuffle, Hernandez, Strawberry. They're all tough outs up and down, these guys line up. 3-1 Atlanta. Tuffle has tapped to the mound, singled, and been called out on strengths. Fast strike outside corner 0 and 1. Skip, we want to compliment the John Smoltz, young pitcher down at Richmond, for another fine performance. 0 and 2 is the count to Tuffle. He won yesterday 3 1. He went 8 and 2 thirds innings. He struck out 8 and didn't walk a batter. Now, control has been his problem. The John yeah. Smoltz is pitching his way right up to the Atlanta Braves. I don't know if it'll happen this year or not, but. He's the guy that he got in the Doyle Alexander trade. He used to be a number one draft choice. A ball and two strikes. Ground ball, right field. Gant, a brilliant play, but he beat it. I don't know how he got to that ball in the first one. Gant showing you why the Braves think he's. One of their top young players leaving his feet, but he couldn't get enough on the ball to retire the batter. What a play by game. And a potential tying run comes to the plate in the person of Keith Hernandez. Chuck Cannon knows this is the inning. This is where they got to get him out. Bottom of the eighth, and the meat of their order is up. Hernandez will be followed by Strawberry, then McReynolds. Well, if he can get through this inning, Pretty good shape. Acker and Ossenmacher go to work in the bullpen. Fast strike to Hernandez, 0-1. Acker and 
Asamaker, as you know, the right-hander. Asamaker, the southpaw. Little broken bat hit to center. Tuffle stops at second. Eighth inning trouble for Atlanta. Here's Strawberry. And the 20,869 are those remaining. Making a racket here now. First Al Canton on his way to the mound. He got out a little luck in his game. An infield hit. It was a good play by Gant, but he couldn't throw the runner out. Then a broken back single by Hernandez in the off field. And big trouble for the Braves and Dane Smith. Strawberry the batter. Tying runners are out there. Usually with a guy like Strawberry, they don't ask him to punt. For anybody else, it's a punting situation to get the tying runners in scoring position. We'll see how Dave Johnson plays it. With Reynolds to follow. Honesty compels you to report that Chuck Tanner's hands are a little bit tied here. The bullpen has been wrapped up so badly that he's almost obligated to stay with Zane Smith as long as he possibly can. Fastball back. Well, I'll say this for Zane Smith. He will throw his fastball to anybody in any spot, and that's why he's a good major league pitcher. Yeah, he doesn't nibble when he gets in trouble. He still throws his good stuff up. At the letters, that's that high strike, and it's 0 2. He had a two strike count on Tuffle, 1 and 2, and let him wriggle off the hook. Let's hope that's not the case with Strawberry. First, Tuffle at second, no one out. Low and away, a ball and two strikes. The right hand hitter, Kevin McReynolds, on deck. Mets have nine hits, but only one run. Breaking ball, foul back, still one and two. And that run scored on an infield roller. There's nobody out here. Foul ball to the left. Perry plays behind the runner at first. Which will get Hernandez to second quicker. And the about a ground ball is it. Just missed outside with a curveball. Two and two. Got it. Virgil held on to the foul tip. Oh, that's he's got the heart of a lion out there. Good job of pitching and catching. Got it right in the webbing. Six strikeouts. McReynolds has struck out, bounced to first, and single. A 6 4 3 would be in order here. Unless you're a Mets fan, and if you are, tough. McReynolds with three homers, nine RBIs, another tough out. Gary Carter is next. Good play by Virgil, way upstairs. One ball, no strikes. He tried to pitch him away last time, and McReynolds got a base hit to right. Continues to fall. Yeah. 
Peter Smith against David Cohn tomorrow night Braves radio only. The 2 0. There's a strike took something off 2 and 1. Tell you what the trade rumors swirl we were talking between innings it's not like they don't like Zane Smith. They think he's a whale of a pitcher and they want a Brinks job if they make a move. Yeah. High breaking ball fouled back McReynolds a little upset he had a good pitch to hit there. Without any question he is the best pitcher on the Atlanta staff right now and one of the better pitchers in the National League. So if you make a move you really got to help yourself because you're giving away a very valuable piece of baseball yeah. talent. It's got to be three or four good prospects. Two balls two strikes. Look out up and in three and two. No, he was trying to throw the fastball over the inside corner at the letter. Will they send the runners with one out? I rather doubt it, but you never know. The stretch. The payoff. They are running. Popped it up foul. Out of play. Andres Thomas had done a good job of jockeying with Tuffle at second base. Held him close to the bag. If McReynolds strikes out, they'll have a great chance for a strike him out, throw him out at third base. Hernandez doesn't run that well from first either, but he's got a big lead because Perry has to play behind him. Again, a payoff pitch. The 3 2, they're running. Ground ball foul by a foot on the third base line. That, of course, the advantage to sending the runners on the extra base hit. Both would score. Yeah, to keep you out of the double play on the grounder. 3 5 and 0 oh for the Braves, 1 9 and 0 oh for the Mets. Pretty hard right now. Well, let's call it off. They got to get their bats. Popped him up, short center field. Who wants it? Albert Hall coming on. He's got it for the second up. But you're not out of the woods yet if you're a Braves fan. Here's a tough clutch hitter, Gary Carter. He's one for three tonight. And his last time up, he chased Deion James, then the Atlanta center fielder, to the fringe of the warning track, just in front of the 396 foot mark. Two on, two up. Catcher, Gary Carter. Howard Johnson would be next. and Ossenmacher ready if needed but it's all up to Zane Smith here. Let up for a strike. Oh what a pitch. 0 and 1. They play Carter straight away in the outfield. Ball and a strength to come. Two balls and a strike. That was the fastball high and away. Getting the fastball up a little bit here in the later innings, which may be a sign of fatigue. Yeah. Managers usually judge it that way. If your pitches start getting high, you're getting tired. Two balls, one strike. 
Carter out of the batter's box. He wanted that pitch, but it was outside, according to Lee Wire. And it's three and one. You can see the rain, as Ernie mentioned, falling quite hard now. Popped up. Virgil and Perry. Who wants it? Gerald Perry hangs on, and the inning is over. He slipped in that muck down there, but held on a point. You talk about a job of pitching in the clutch. Give Zane Smith some credit there. Two hits, no runs, no errors, two left. We go to the ninth. Atlanta clinging to a 3 1 lead. This is the leading edge of racing technology. The perfection of the new Pennzoil Z7 Special, powered by the Penske Chevrolet engine. And from day one, it has run on the world-class protection of Pennzoil motor oil. There is no other engine in the world like it, and no other oil in the world can protect it like Pennzoil. Pennzoil, world-class protection that exceeds U.S. warranty requirements of every car maker in the world. Now save $3 a case or 20 cents a quart. See mail-in rebate coupon in the back of every bottle. Whatever happens to real food, you know the kind that just tastes real good. Give me a steak and I won't be blue. I got a taste for some real food. Beef, real food for real people. Mitsubishi knows you want a truck to be tough. tough and but we also know you want more for your money. Tough and enough, and enough. Mitsubishi Mighty Max trucks give you more. Up to 2.6 liters of power, a five-speed stick, with standard features for less than Toyota, Nissan, or Mazda. Even the lowest-priced macro can. The new Mitsubishi Mighty Max trucks. Tough and enough, and more. Mitsubishi, suddenly the obvious choice. Tonight, National Geographic takes you inside Macumba, the spirit cults of Brazil. Witness ritual, trance, and possession. Learn the secrets of Macumba on Explorer. 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 midnight Eastern on the Superstation. Tonight. Tuesday night, Cleveland clashes with Chicago and Michael Air Jordan, while Denver and Seattle battle out west. The NBA playoffs. 8.05 Eastern on the Superstation. Tuesday. Don't forget, after the game, a Glenn Ford movie, The Rounders, a Western comedy action flick, will be seen right here on TBS. Albert Hall will lead off the ninth inning for Atlanta. He's batting in Ken Griffey's spot in the order. Griff left a couple of innings ago. And Hall bunts fouled on the first baseline. Not a bad idea, nothing in one. Well, they had more than 20,000 here at the outset, and they've got about 3,000 left. And you can't blame the folks for heading home early tonight. It is nasty. Yankees lead the White Sox 3-2 after 7 tonight in Baltimore. 6-1 over Texas in the bottom of the sixth. McDowell inside to Hall. Kansas City shut out Boston 2 0. Cleveland shut out California 3 0. A two hitter for Pat Swindell. He's 6 0. Ground ball to Tuffle. He's had a busy night and he's played flawlessly out there. One down. Tuffle carries his glove real low to the ground. A lot of infield coaches will teach that. In other words, you can bring your glove up a lot easier than you can putting it down carrying it say six or seven inches above the ground so he always carries it watch how low his glove is to the ground he just carries it down there low and turned out to be a pretty good fielder I didn't think he was that good but he's played brilliantly here tonight and he gets another chance two down it's kind of pushed Backman out of a job and primarily because of his good glove work mm -hmm. Backman is a Used to platoon with Tuffle, but now Tuffle's playing against everybody. Oakland wins again. They beat Detroit 4-2. Glenn Hubbard doing a good job for that Oakland team. 
Milwaukee leads Minnesota 4-3 after six and a half. Toronto Seattle scoreless in the second. There's Wally Backman. Cincinnati beat Montreal 3-2. I know you heard about that. Mike Schmidt tied Jimmy Fox in the home run department. Philly is winning big over Houston. Ground ball. Virgil just missed a double. Boston Bruins beat the New Jersey Devils 5-3 tonight to take a 1-0 lead in their series. Dodgers lead the Pirates in the second, 2-0. Sean Dunstan's homer has gotten the Cubs out in front of San Diego. And that's all the other baseball up to the moment. Sharply hit. Elster, good play. Short hop. Inning over. So McDowell pitched two innings and got six ground balls. No hits, no runs. No errors, none left. The Mets come up for their last at bats, and the Braves lead 3-1. There's no place on earth that I'd rather be than out in the open where it's all plain to see. If it's gonna get done, it's up to you and to me. There's no place that I'd rather be. Head for the mountains of bush. Head for the mountains of bush. Be Did you know, sponsored by Sure Antiperspirant. Be just as sure about odor as you are about wetness. In 1984, Dick Schofield Jr. was the California Angels starting shortstop the day Mike Witt threw a perfect game. But did you know that 25 years earlier, when the Pirates' Harvey Haddix threw 12 perfect innings, the starting shortstop that night was Dick's father, Dick Schofield Sr. We've been here too. Kathy Durham looks cool under pressure, but just because her blouse is dry doesn't mean she smells good. Because underarm odor is invisible, she needs Sure Roll-On. Sure helps protect against wetness and kills bacteria that cause odor. So Kathy, why go to school with a dry blouse and a false sense of security? Tomorrow, use Sure Roll-On and be just as sure about odor as you are about wetness. Thanks. We go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Howard Johnson, Evan Elster, and a pinch hitter for Roger McDowell will come to the plate against Zane Smith, who has battled his heart out here tonight. He's pitched a courageous ball game. These guys are red hot, too. They won five in a row. In NBA basketball playoffs, Washington beat Detroit tonight, 114-106. Jeff Malone, 35 points. Moses Malone, 23. Detroit leads the series two games to one. Johnson has flied to center, flied to right, flied to center again. Nobody on or out in the ninth. Look out. Our next Braves telecast will be at 535 Eastern on Friday night from Atlanta against the Phillies. There's a strike, two and one. Zane wants to make this guy hit his way on, yet no one wants to walk anybody in this situation. Make him earn it. Two and one. Out of play, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, ninth inning, 3-1 Atlanta. They had about a 48-minute rain delay at the outset.
Ground ball to third. Obergefell has it. Should be the first one. It is. Here's Elster, who's a pesky hitter. Lee Mazzilli moves on deck. Elster tonight has struck out, bounced into a force play and single. Ron Gantz, two out, two strike, three run double in the seventh inning. Has been the big hit of the game. Albert Hall on the move. Catches up. Oh. That ball almost oozed out of there, but he hung on two down. A little white. A little smile. Here's Mazzilli. Mazzilli is a guy who has as, probably as good a knowledge of the strike zone as any hitter in baseball. He is tough to pitch to. You gotta, you gotta throw strikes. He made the circuit. He started with the uh, New York Mets, several other teams, and now he's back here. That should do it. And Gant, fittingly enough, makes the final assist and a great job. For Zane Smith, and as his teammates congratulate him, you just wonder if you'll see him pitch another game in an Atlanta uniform. For, as we said, both the Blue Jays and Yankees have expressed a lot of interest. Braves win their second in a row, 3-1. A terrific job for Zane Smith. And totals and highlights after this.